Hello and welcome to another episode of Island Learning Grenada Sundays. Uh, today is July 16th and we are into our third episode of this season of Island Learning Grenada. So we're going to take the intro video very early just so that folks know that we are live both across our Facebook page, Island Learning Grenada, as well as our YouTube channel, Island Learning Grenada. Welcome to all our new followers across uh, Facebook as well as YouTube. Thank you for liking and following us at Island Learning Grenada. So let's take in our intro video and then we'll come back with a full introduction just so that we continue to build up the live. So during the intro, uh, share the live. The most important thing that you can do is share the live. So hit the share button and share the live. That will help us to reach a broader audience as well as uh, if you're watching via YouTube, hit the subscribe button and ensure that you subscribe to our channel Island Learning Grenada. But let's take a, a quick break, taking the intro video, and then I'll come back uh, just so that we continue to build up the live. So we'll be right back. All right, back. So thank you and welcome to everyone joining our live Facebook program today, Island Learning Grenada Sundays. We are back for another episode in this season of Island Learning Grenada. Whether you are watching, if you are in Grenada or you're somewhere in the diaspora, thank you for making some time to tune in into our program where we educate about Grenada's rich history heritage and culture for this season the program is focused on traditional mass uh, the traditional mass festival is coming up on saturday july 29th uh, at victoria in st max an event put on by the spice mass corporation so you can definitely check out that live event where you would be able to see in the full splendor of the traditional mass bands. Uh, so far, we have covered in our educational programming. We spoke in the first episode about Shotney. And then in last uh, Wednesday, we had a program focused on VECO or the VECO mass. And today we're looking at the Apache Wild Indian, which is another traditional mass are uh, practiced and still active and relevant in Grenada's as part of its uh, the traditional mass. It is one that is, uh, I believe, sincerely is uh, 
most threatened or at risk of extinction given the very low numbers of participation uh, in the wild, the Apache Wild Indian Mass. Uh, so it, it, preservation is definitely needed there. So that's what's going to be today's topic. We're going to talk about the Apache Wild Indian. And later on in the program, as we do with each of these programs, we're going to give away, have a ticket giveaway. We'll be giving away uh, two kids tickets to the Kiddies Carnival coming up on August 5th. That's Saturday, August 5th. Uh, so just, uh, well, one, 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 not next Saturday, but the following Saturday uh, would be August 5th. And that's all about the children's carnival frolic. So we'll be giving away two kids tickets to a lucky person who answers one of our questions. So definitely stay tuned into the program today so that uh, you can uh, win that ticket. So before I get started each uh, episode, I'd like to give a quick introduction of myself and who I am, especially for those who are viewing the program for the very first time uh, since the last time we aired. We do have uh, some new followers, both on our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page. Uh, so I want to shout you out. Thank you. Thank you so much for of following our content and liking our page. So a little bit about myself. Uh, so my name is Crystal Simeon. I am a Grenadian, a born and raised Grenadian, originally from the parish of uh, St. David. So that's the, the Virgin Parish, the parish without any tongue, that kind of a thing, right? So the parish of St. David, the community of Old Westall, to be exact, is where I grew up and lived for the majority of my life before migrating to Canada, where I now reside. More about me, I used to be a teacher, so uh, I taught for eight years at the Presentation Brothers College, so I taught uh, Caribbean history there for eight years. I'm also an uh, alumni of the St. George's University, where I studied uh, business management. And then uh, for the last 10 years, I am residing in Canada, Western Canada, and uh, I'm a trained coach, facilitator, and uh, instructional designer. I'm also the owner of Spice Island Digi Content, and I have owned this business for the last two years. Uh, we are registered as part of the new cultural and creative industry in Grenada. Our focus is on education, uh, on Grenada's history, heritage, and culture. And we do that in several ways. Uh, we have a website. So right now going across our screen there, uh, our website is www.islandlearning.gd. So on, on our website, we have over 62 articles about Grenada's history, heritage, and culture. So if you're looking for information about Grenada's history, heritage, and culture, there's lots of information there, and we're continuing to build the content there on our website. So do check it out, www.islandlearning.gd. We also hold these seasonal Facebook programs where we educate on Grenada's history, heritage, and culture via social media and our social media channels. YouTube and Facebook. And coming soon, we're going to relaunch our heritage classes. Originally, when we did it, we, we tried to, to focus on the smaller children, but through learnings and some challenges, we're now going to focus more on the older and then do some other things in terms of the younger children that we're trying to reach with our educational programs. So our Heritage classes, which we're going to talk a little bit more in the program, will be focused for more persons 16 years and older, so mostly adults, and we'll be offering those classes via Zoom. So I'll speak about more about that later on in the program. But we're just getting started, so there's lots more to come from uh, Island Learning Grenada, which is the brand that we're marketing under about all things Grenada's history heritage, and culture. 
that was a lot to take in. I don't know if you, uh, that was a lot. I, I did share a lot there. Uh, but the most important thing before we go on another break, and then we're going to get into really talking about the Apache Wild Indian, the most important thing is to share the program. Share the program on your Facebook page. So hit the share button. Whenever you share the program, it allows us to reach a broader audience. So share the program. Uh, if you are watching via our YouTube channel, Island Learning Grenada, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified each time that we go live with a live show. So I'm going to go for a quick, quick break again. And then we're going to get right into the program today, looking at the Apache Wild Indian. It's a traditional mass uh, that is often not spoken about um, much, and there's not much available on it. But in today's program, we're going to sh share a bit more about the Apache Wild Indian. And of course, leave us a comment if you want me to shout you out during our live program. Just leave a comment. And I'll definitely stop the programming and shout you out for sure. So uh, let's take a quick break and then we'll be right back to get into the program for today. Spice alcohol grenade. Join us every Sunday at 7 p.m. Grenadian time for our weekly educational program on Grenada's history, heritage, and culture. Stream live on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, Island Learning Grenada. So we are back. We are back after the break. Uh, so thank you for sticking with us. So just a quick disclaimer before I get into talking about the Apache Wild Indian today. Uh, the information that is shared as part of this program or any program that we do is based on information that we have collected either through research as well as through information gathered from cultural practitioners. As our aim is education, we do seek to verify and validate that as much as possible that the information that we are sharing is accurate. So that's a disclaimer. So let's get into talking about the Apache Wild Indian. I'm just going to load the sound here so I don't hear that bounce back. So the Apache Wild Indian. So... The Apache Wild Indian is derived from our indigenous heritage and the fact that many, many, many years ago, uh, the island of Grenada was inhabited by the indigenous people. So the indigenous people is the new term that is used. Uh, most of us would have grown up with uh, hearing about the Caribs and the Arawaks. In today's world, the indigenous peoples are the language that is used to talk about the first inhabitants of the islands across the Caribbean, including Grenada. So what we used to know as the Caribs or the Awaks, and the Caribs today is also more called the Kalinagos, which is the word that they call themselves. So when Christopher Columbus discovered the Caribbean islands, the people who he met, they called themselves the Kalinagos. Uh, he called them the Caribs. And because of colonization and most of the history that we know has come to the hands of our colonizers, uh, we use the word Caribs. But Kalinagos are the, the word, is the word uh, to refer to the indigenous people whom would have lived in Grenada. So the Kalinagos 
or if you want to use uh, the European word, which was Caribs, uh, they lived in Grenada uh, pre 1498. So 1498 is when Christopher Columbus, on his third voyage to the Caribbean, uh, discovered uh, Grenada, which he called Conception Island. The Kalinagos were already inhabiting the island and they were living their lives. They had their culture, they had their heritage and everything like that existing upon the arrival of the uh, Europeans. The Kalinagos, it is known today that they would have originally come from South America. So they would have traveled up from South America, Venezuela, Guyana, the uh, well, Venezuela would be like the Orinoco, Guyana, and come up through South America and eventually made their way into the Caribbean islands. And that's how um, the Kalinagos ended up on the island of Grenada. But their origin is rooted in South America. The Kalinagos uh, thrived alongside the Europeans for many years. But there was an event in which um, today we know as the Lippers Hill event in which um, the Kalinagos, uh, many of them um, died. Uh, it is believed today that the reason for their death was that they were pushed off uh, the cliff there at Lippers Hill in St. Patrick's. Uh, so that's the new version of what took place uh, as the event of the Lippers Hill event. So that's the Kalinagos. There still remains to the aspects of the culture and heritage that we have kept. Uh, so, for example, uh, scattered across Grenada, there are 89 Amerindian sites. And those sites we know based on research, archaeology, that's a big word, archaeolo archaeological research, uh, that those sites exist. Uh, those sites are mostly found in the parish of St. Andrews, uh, St. Patrick's, and uh, St. George's. So, for example, we have the Mount Rich uh, petroglyphs. Uh, they have a carved stone center there at Mount Rich, and there are petroglyphs there. So that's one example of uh, indigenous, indigenous existence. Uh, there's also the um, several other petroglyph sites scattered in the parish of St. Max. So there is one at Larry Sauce. There's also one at Duquesne in St. Max as well. Right? There's also what is called workstone sites, which were sites that the uh, indigenous people used to sharpen their tools or build their tools. So there are several located across Grenada, including Telescope and in Grand Mall. Other evidence of indigenous life uh, or indigenous culture and heritage in Grenada is through agriculture. So we eat corn. So the indigenous people are the Kalinagos. Uh, corn was called maize, and that was a key part of their diet as well as cassava or manioc, right? So cassava or manioc was also key to the diet of the indigenous people. And we, we eat cassava. Today, we prepare it in various dishes. There's even talk about having a cassava festival. So that stems from our rich indigenous heritage. That's part of who we are as a Grenadian people. Uh, there's also a uh, craft. So the indigenous people were very good with craft. Uh, basket weaving is an example of craft, uh, through making craft with their hands that reflects our indigenous heritage and culture. So there's lots scattered across uh, where we can look at and say, okay, this is, this is where we come from. Part of it is African. We know West African tradition is rich in Grenada. There's also indigenous culture and heritage that is rich and dom dominant in Grenada as well. So the Apache Wild Indian is such an example of indigenous culture, though still very small and, uh, as I said, at high risk of 
extinction there exists today the apache wild indian but the origin is traced back to the uh inhabitation of the island grenada by the indigenous people and that is who these are the caribs right so let's take a short break that was a lot of information to take in so let's take a short break and then we'll be right back and then we'll talk more about the apache wild indian um where it's practiced and what the mass looks like well let's take a quick short break and we'll be right back and of course say hello in the comments i want to shout you out on the program so do say hello if you are tuning in and you're watching the program live for those who will see the program after it has aired um thank you for viewing the program in advance and taking time to watch our program on Grenada's history, heritage, and culture. So we'll be right back. Spice Isle, call Grenada. Join us every Sunday at 7 p.m. Grenadian time for our weekly educational program on Grenada's history, heritage, and culture. Stream live on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, Island Learning Grenada. And we are back. We are back uh, with the program. Thank you for continuing to watch us and tuning into our program. So let's get more into talking about the Apache Wild Indian. So there is uh, actually two groups of Wild Indian mass. There is the Apache Wild Indian. There's also the Fancy Mass Indian. We'll talk a little bit about the Fancy Mass Indian later on in the program. It is not as I wouldn't say relevant, um, but it's not as uh, vivid on the street as the Apache Wild Indian. Um, back in the day, so several bands, for example, Lazarus and Antoine, us, um, Francis Redhead and Associates would depict fancy mass Indians or, or fancy Indians as part of the mass band portrayal. Um, so it's not something that stands up on its own. It's usually incorporated or part of a bigger mass band portrayal, whereby they use like the feathered headdresses as part of the costuming for like the male male costumes. So I'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the program. But the program is more educational on the Apache Wild Indian. So the Apache Wild Indian, it was originally uh, started by uh, villagers in the parish of St. Andrews. Uh, Byland in St. Andrews was the start of the Apache Wild Indian. Today, um, very small groups of the Apache Wild Indian exist. Uh, there is... Uh, in St. David, there is one sm very small group in uh, Belai in St. David. They have a small group, uh, mostly women, who play the Apache Wild Indian. Uh, so the group is mostly women and young girls, and often there may be one or two male performers or uh, masqueraders, but it's predominantly as it exists today. Um, traditional mass that is uh, dominated by females or women and girls so there's that small band out of uh, Belai in St. David uh, there's also another small Apache Wild Indian group I believe they are from uh, St. Max um, so those are the two groups that I know that are existing today as I said it's one of the uh, mass forms that are most at risk of extinction because of the small numbers. 
So before I get more into talking about the Apache Wild Indian, uh, let's take in a video so you can actually see what the Apache Wild Indian uh, looks like. Um, so this video copyright to GBTV. Uh, so this is from a carnival of yesteryear. The year was 1990 when carnival used to be at the Queen's Park Oval uh, in River Road. Uh, so let's take in that video so you can get a, a touch of, of what the wild Indian uh, mass looks like. We're going to call now a little group Call the current Red Rose. You know when you talk about shortening, you got to talk about Red Indians. And here they are, coming all the way from Corinth in St. David's. Then the boat and the boat in Then the boat and the boat 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 Then the boat then I bought and I bought dinner. 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 We're gonna have a boat, we're gonna have a boat to anchor. We're gonna have a boat. We're gonna have a boat, we're gonna have a boat to anchor. We're gonna have a boat, we're gonna have a boat to anchor. We gonna have a boat, we gonna have a boat to anchor. We gonna have a boat, we gonna have a boat to anchor. We gonna have a boat, we gonna have a boat to anchor. We gonna have a boat, we gonna have a boat to anchor. We gonna have a boat, we gonna have a boat to anchor. Put your hands together for the corn's red rose. Wild Indians. They say Indians got a boat to So that was a, a video of back in the day, 1990 carnival of a, a Apache Wild Indian uh, mass band. So out of current in St. David. So that band no longer exists today, but that's just an example of uh, the Wild Indian Mass. Uh, back in the day, as you would see that the mass was predominantly uh, done by men and in the appearance um, of the entire, the entire costume was that of, for, for men, right? So it has shifted a bit uh, today. These bands have one or two males but the majority of the band is made up of women so we're going to take a quick break and then come back and talk more about the appearance of the wild indian masquerader what does that appearance look like so let's take a quick break and be right back
So we are back. We are back. So uh hope that you continue to tune in uh, to the program. Of course, drop us a comment uh, so I can shout you out as needed. So let's talk about the appearance of the wild Indian because they do have a very uh, distinct appearance in terms of how they look different from and each traditional mass uh, band is, is different, has its own unique look. Uh, so the appearance of the wild Indian. So the wild Indian is dressed in colorful clothing. So they don't wear a lot of clothes. Uh, they're mostly not covered, but they do have parts of their body that are covered. So they, they do have a, a blouse top and a short skirt, which is colorful. Um, the men wear, uh, most times you could see that kind of colorful, I guess you could call it underwear, a panty that they wear as part of the costuming. Um, they paint their faces, arms, and legs in white and red um, paint. Um, back in the day, the Kalina Godi had what's called Ruku, which is a, a red, I won't say paint, but it, it's red coloring that they use so that is reflects that part of the tradition right so they, they paint white and red uh, uh, across their arms their legs and their, their faces um the men are uh, they wear tall colorful feathered headdresses so in the video that was just shown the head pieces were like the peaks of a boat or a canoe so the indigenous people, the canoe is their main mode of transportation. So they go from island to island. They go fishing, uh, which is our main way of how they make their living. They do all that through their canoes, which they make themselves. The dog out canoes, that's the type of boat that they build themselves uh, to, for transportation and for fishing. So the 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 canoe on, on the head of the masquerade depicts part of their way of living. So for the men, they wear that canoe, which is a feathered headdress in the form of a dog or canoe. They carry that on their head. Um, the feathered headdresses, another head headpiece could be feathered headdresses, which depicts what the chief or the uh, the chief of the Kalinago people would have worn back in the day. So these large feathered headdresses are uh, made by hand and consisting of many, many, many feathers. Um, beady jewelry. So they wear beady jewelry uh, on their ankles and around their, their wrists. They wear beady jewelry. So they're another form of masquerade that they tend not to use music. So most of the traditional mass do not use music. And this goes back to the fact that the traditional mass is more of a protest mass. That's the origin. So the, the, the whole tribe is either two. They're honoring the ancestors or they're speaking against social ills through depiction of the, their mass. So the wild Indians, you would hear them chanting. Uh, they would be chanting and making talking about things in their performance relating to what's taking place. So they don't use any music. So the, the anklets and the wristlets with beads uh, also contribute to the song that they make um, besides of the chants. The men too as well would often carry a long wooden spear, uh, which provides the appearance of like a Kalinago in battle. So they used a long wooden spear as part of the masquerade costume. So that's, that's the costume, the appearance of the wild Indian in full. Uh, the women, um, they have a similar, they don't have headdresses, but they would wear a similar short skirt, colorful, a short blouse that is short across here with their stomach exposed with beads around their anklets and their wristlets. So that would be the the look of for the female masquerader who's playing the Apache Wild Indian. So let's take a quick break and then we'll come back with another video to show the performance of the Apache Wild Indian. So let's take a quick break and be right back.
we are right back. So let's take in another video of the uh, Apache Wild Indian performer. Take it a video from way back in the 1990s that depicts the live performance of the Apache Wild Indian. And then we'll talk a little bit more about how they usually perform the masquerade. So let's take in that video and be right back. So that's a video of the uh, performance of uh, one group of Apache Wild Indians back in the day. So the performance is uh, often accommodated by, accompanied uh, by drums or drumming as part of the performance. They don't use any DJ music like anything like that. Uh, they make different uh, um, patterns as they dance, whether it's circular um, patterns as they dance. Uh, to the music of the drums, as well as there's uh, often a male masquerade who does the main chanting or chanting of lines as part of the performance or portrayal of the uh, wild Indian. On the streets itself, uh, they won't have drums, so they would not have drums on the street, so it is just the chants. There would be a chant and response is is what it's called so one person will be chanting often it would be a male masquerader who would be chanting and the response is done by the female masqueraders in uh that's how the chant and response um method works uh so there's a main line or two that's being chanted and the female masqueraders would respond as it is a protest form of mass uh, the chanting and the response would be something in relation to some kind of either social issue or something that's happening in their community or village that they want um, the public to be made aware of, aware of uh, some issue that is close, closely connected to them is uh, what would be chanted and the response provided by the female masqueraders. Uh, making a circular format is often done too as well, where the, the masqueraders make a circular format and go wrong in a circle um, led by a, a, a lead masquerader. So if you want to see 
in full what the Apache Wild Indian, what the performance looks like again. Um, check out the traditional mass festival that's coming up on Saturday, July 29th, where you'll be able to see the full splendor of all the traditional mass bands, including the Apache Wild Indian Mass Band. It is a mass that would be done by adults as well as uh, of, of children, uh, small children. Um, like all the other mass, I think once you're three years old, you could play that type of mass. Uh, there isn't anything much to learn to it as opposed to the VA co mass, where there's a bit of a learning to it. So that's the Apache Wild Indian Mass in a nutshell. Uh, just want to touch a little bit about the fancy um, Wild Indian Mass. It is not. Uh, played in Grenada anymore. Um, it, was, it was never a band itself. What typically used to happen is that um, fancy mass bands would include a uh, fancy wild Indian as part of the portrayal. Often it's a portrayal for male masqueraders whereby they have a fancy big headdress uh, that they wear uh, as part of the, the larger portrayal by the mass band right so it's more in trinidad it's the fancy wild indian is more you can find it more in trinidad they have kept it alive but to date uh, none of the fancy mass bands in grenada i think have a, a fancy mass indian character as part of the mass uh, for this year uh so you won't be you won't see it on the streets for this uh, spice mass season so that's again something uh, that could be brought back by one of the, the bands on the road uh, to look at the fancy wild Indian mass character as part of their portrayal. I want to do the giveaway. I want to do the giveaway before I talk a little bit about Dominica, our sister island, Dominica. So I want to do the giveaway. So... Uh, typically, how the giveaway works is that um, answer in the comment, uh, put the answer in the comment, and the first person to get it correct, you will win yourself two kids' tickets to Kitty's Carnival coming up on August 5th, um, Saturday, August 5th. And it's going to be a super easy, easy question. Um, and we want to give away the tickets on the live as opposed to the rebroadcast. Um, so the question, um, super easy, the question for the giveaway. So name the parish to which a wild Indian mass band can be found. So name the parish to which the wild Indian uh, mass can be found. So that's the, the question for the giveaway. Name the parish. To which the wild Indian mass can be found? That's the question. Give you two minutes. Too hard. We don't have any viewers. We are super shy. Okay, so we'll, we'll hold on the question. Again, the question is, name the parish to which the wild Indian mass can be found. So uh, there are seven parishes across Grenada, Carrico and P.T. Matnik. So which is the parish that the wild Indian mass can be found today? I spoke about it earlier in the program. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the sister Isle of Dominica. Um, so Dominica is... Uh, an island that exists that there are Kalinagos. So most of the islands, the Kalinago population is completely um, no longer existing, but the Doman in Dominica, there is a strong towards the northeastern side of the island, a strong Kalinago population. Um, so they are the last existing community in the 
Caribbean, uh, which can trace their direct descendants to the original indigenous Kalinago people who lived in the Caribbean islands before the arrival of the Europeans. So they're the only remaining um, group of Kalinagos that can trace back their lineage right back to the days uh, before Christopher Columbus would have um, colonized the Caribbean, well, came to the Caribbean and then that was followed by European colonization. So uh, they're a very important group. They do a lot to ensure that they maintain and preserve their culture and heritage there because of um, they're the last remaining group. So if they don't keep their traditions going, keep their population, then that's the end of that particular lineage of the Kalinago existing anywhere in the Caribbean. There is also some in Guyana, uh, but Guyana is the original homeland or one of the original homeland of the Kalinagos before they made their way up to the Caribbean. So Guyana was the original. So there's still a group of Kalinagos uh, and they're maintaining their culture and heritage too there in Guyana. But when we talk about the Caribbean islands from Cuba, come all the way down to Trinidad, uh, Dominica is the only island that have maintained uh, a reasonable sized uh, community of Kalinago people who today are continuing to maintain and preserve their culture and heritage. So some of the elements of the Apache wild Indian can be seen in the, of course, the Kalinago people in Dominica um, because that's that's the original people. They have the original aspects of culture and heritage to which we, we kind of maintain vaguely as part of the Apache wild Indian. So that's uh, Dominica. So in terms of indigenous culture and heritage linked outside of Grenada to broader to the Caribbean, it would be Dominica. Dominica, Guyana are the two um, two contact points for Kalinago communities and indigenous culture and heritage. So we're still on the question though. So let's take in a short video about, this is a video about uh, Kalinago. So that's a video of the Kalinago dancing. So that's the Kalinago out of Dominica uh, to see a little bit of their performance. Again, in many parts of it mimics um what the apache wild indian uh continue to do today in grenada so there's definitely a connection between the kalinago uh culture and heritage in dominica and the apache wild indian in grenada so let's take in that video and then i'll be right back <laughs> Thank you. 
So that's the Carnegie Novel out of uh, Dominica. So uh, the performance, again, we mix a lot of what the Apache Wild Indian does. So the this would be uh, Carnegie Novel women dancing to the sound of drums. Again, no other music is used except drums. Uh, there was straw costuming there um, in that video. Um, and that's a little bit different from what the Apache Wild Indian were today in Grenada. So that's uh, the program today on the Apache Wild Indian. Again, I'm going to leave the giveaway question. I'm actually going to put it in the comments part. So if anyone after the live wants to um, answer the question, I'll check back. So name the parish to which the Wild Indian Mass can be found today. That's the question for the giveaway of um, two tickets. Win yourself two take two kids tickets to the children's carnival. Probably coming coming up on Saturday, August the fifth. So that's the question. Uh, if you answer after the live, that is fine. I'll still give away the two tickets if you're on the re. The rebroadcast on Wednesday or throughout the week, someone answers. I'll still give away the two tickets to uh, the lucky person who got, got get the answer correct here. So let's take the very, very last break and then we'll be right back to wrap up the show for today. Spice Alcohol Grenada. Join us every Sunday at 7 p.m. Grenadian time for our weekly educational program on Grenada's history, heritage, and culture. Stream live on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, Island Learning Grenada. So we are back and we're just going to wrap up here the program. So let me tell you a little bit more about our Zoom classes. So we have Zoom classes on Grenada's history, heritage, and culture. So just a little backstory because there's a backstory here. So initially, when I uh, envisioned this, I was offering the classes um, for smaller children, um, but given the direction that the I think the government is going to introduce history in schools coming September and so forth. So I think definitely the secondary school children may be covered. Of course, if anyone wants additional classes, I can provide. And then the primary school children, I have to redo uh, what I offer. Initially, I wanted to do online courses, but for small children, online courses aren't going to work. So I'm looking at turning those into educational games, so digital educational games. So that's my that's that's a change here. Um, but the Zoom classes that we have beginning in August are targeted towards older, so 16 plus, right? So adult, well, 16 is not adult, 18 is, but 16 and over. So if you are interested in learning more about Grenada's history, heritage, and culture, uh, given that the school system has never taught Grenada's history, heritage, and culture in no way or form, except uh, beginning shortly as we approach the 50th year of independence, uh, there's a lot of people that don't know about Grenada's history, heritage, and culture. So we are offering Zoom classes. The classes are delivered via Zoom what exactly are taught in the classes so um one would be uh the fed on rebellion uh the grenada revolution so that period from 1979 to 1983 we're also going to be looking at uh, indigenous heritage 
in Grenada. So what are the indigenous heritage that exists across Grenada? Uh, fourthly, um, the influence of the French and evidence of French in Grenada. So there are many examples of the influence of French in Grenada. And then culture, we'll talk about music, dance, food, and festivals across Grenada, Cariku, and Piti Matnik. Uh, and lastly, traditions, oral and folk traditions in Grenada, Cariku, and Piti Matnik. So if you want more information, definitely check out our website, www.islandlearning.gd, and check out register for a class, and all the information is available. So the classes are offered on an evening time from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., so Monday to Thursday. So you need to take all four sessions um, to cover all the topics, uh, Fedon's Rebellion, Grenada Revolution, Amerindian Heritage, the influence of the French, uh, culture and traditions. So the classes are offered from Monday to Thursday, 6 p.m., to 8 p.m. Once you complete the class, uh, you will get a certificate saying that you know educated on Grenada's history, heritage, and culture. So the class is two hours, Monday to Thursday, beginning in August. Uh, of course, stay tuned to our Facebook page because we're going to post more information about the class there and, of course, the registration link where you can register to take the class. Uh, the price, we have a very uh, awesome price being, so just for the classes alone, it's $40, right? When we get into hopefully the tours coming later on in September, it's going to be different, but for the classes only, um, it's $40. The entire four days of classes, $40 EC. And that's based upon our surveying. Uh, that's the price people said that they would be interested in, that price point. So $40 uh, for the class on Grenada's history, heritage, and culture. And we cover six different topics, important topics in relation to Grenada's history, heritage, and culture. Of course, if you bring more people with you, you'll get a discount. So if you want to take, you and a friend take the class, will offer you a discount um, for bringing along a friend to take the class. So refer a friend discount is definitely in effect. If you want more information, of course, check out our website. You can also uh, WhatsApp us. Uh, the number here is 535-4745 uh, is the WhatsApp number. So send us a WhatsApp message. If you are interested in the class, it's a class on Grenada's history, heritage, and culture for persons over the ages of age of 16. It's done via Zoom, uh, two hours for an entire week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So let us know what dates and times can work for you. And the price is only $40 EC. If you are in the diaspora, we am flexible so I can accommodate you at any time suitable to you. Just let me know the day and the time that can work best for you and I can accommodate it. So I'm super flexible in terms of if you are in the diaspora and 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Grenadian time don't work for you. You want it on your time, whether it's... um. Whatever time zone you're in, New York time zone, Toronto time zone, UK time zone, I can always adjust on my end here. So that's a bit more about the heritage classes. The classes only, as I said, are $40 EC. And we're also looking at another offering, uh, more details to be shared, which would include the class and the tour combined together for a different price point. So if you are interested, definitely, or you want more information, uh, feel free to reach us via WhatsApp 535-4745 or check out our website www.islandlearning.gd and you can read more about the class on the register for a class. So that's our program today. 
thank you all who viewed our program today. Uh, whether you're watching live or you're going to see the rebroadcast, which is going to take place on Wednesday this week. Thank you for taking the time to view our program. I hope that you learned something about the Apache Wild Indian. Uh, you can follow us on Island Learning Grenada. That's our Facebook page. We're also on Instagram, Island Learning Grenada. And you can definitely, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel, Island Learning Grenada, and hit the notification bell so that you're notified each time that we go live with a live show. Uh, next week, we're going to look at the Juju Warriors, another group not much is known about. Uh, so we'll share about the Juju Warriors and also talk about Sailor Mass. Uh, so Sailor Mass is back for another year as part of the traditional mass band. Um, so we'll talk about the Juju Warriors and the Sailor Mass. So thank you, thank you for viewing the program. That was a pleasure sharing up here on a Sunday and sharing uh, knowledge. Of course, I'm not the knowledge keeper of, every, of everything. So if someone happens to know more than me, um, definitely share and I can share here on this live program too as well. So thank you. Have a blessed week. Um, and uh, we'll be back next Sunday, God's willing, God's fear life. Um, to talk about the Juju Warriors and Sailor Mass. Mark your calendars for the traditional mass festival coming up on July 29th in the home of the VA Comas. Uh, that would be Victoria St. Max, right? So bring all the kids and the family to see the traditional mass live in full splendor. Take care. And see you next week. Bye.